Hi everyone, welcome to my live creative time today. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, welcome to another week of fun crafting. Um, we are going to make a cute little um, card today. I think it's going to be a fairly quick and easy card. Uh, well, I won't say quick, but I think it's going to be pretty easy. Um, we might do some little techniques in there as well. But I have some exciting things to share with you today, some exciting news. So um, stick with me. Now, before we get to that, I'm going to bring this live up on my um, other devices so that I can see all of your lovely comments there. So bear with me for one moment while I just get this ready. Yeah, see if I can get my iPad to play nice. And I'll just turn that volume down. There we go. Oops, catching my cord there. There we go. Fantastic. Got that one ready. And my computer. Let's reload that. And mute that one. There we go. Oh, good. We are ready to rock and roll. So, how is everyone today? How was your weekend? Let me know. Um, as you're jumping into the comments, say hi. Let me know that you're here. I love to chat with you as we are crafting because that's part of crafting, isn't it? We get together, we enjoy each other's company, we have a chat, and um, yeah, just enjoy each other's company. So, I love that about our crafting community that we have the opportunity of doing that. Now, if you are watching live today, you will see the red live button up in the top left hand corner. If you don't see that, then you are watching the replay. Thank you to all of you that are coming back to watch my replay. And if you're watching over on YouTube, then you will definitely be watching the replay because I do upload all of the videos afterwards over there to my YouTube channel. So if you're not yet following me there over on YouTube, feel free to go over there and follow my YouTube channel. Um, any of my videos, if you are not one to like the chit chat, feel free just to fast forward through all the chit chat to get to the crafting. Um, but as I said, it is part of what we do and it's part of what I offer. And um, yeah, so if, that, if that's not for you though, that's totally fine. Feel free to fast forward through. All right, now um, I would love to know something that you did on the weekend. So share with me in the comments something that you did on the weekend. I had a very exciting weekend. We had our leaders, uh, our Stampin' Up! Leaders backstage event, which is um, a time of learning for us who are leaders. Um, and it's really fun and we get to learn lots of cool things. We get to see sneak peeks of upcoming products. We get to hear from um, the the executive team from Stampin' Up! And then we get to network with each other um, as leaders as well. So we get to meet people um, from all around the world. So it's really exciting. I got to meet some, meet some new beautiful people. I got to link back up again with some of my um, friends and people that I knew of but didn't hadn't met um, in person yet. So it was a really, really fantastic weekend. Um, and it was a great time of learning. So, um, yeah, so thank you to all of my team and my customers who make it possible for me to be able to do that um, in supporting me. And uh, I, I do these things so that I can better support um, and serve you. So, um, yeah, so thank you all so much for your support. Hi, Rose. How are you? Lovely to have you with us today. Thanks for being here. Um, so, yeah, so feel free to share with me uh, something that you did on the weekend and um, chat, away with, chat away with me. Now, um, I had two very early mornings with the backstage event because it's global across the world. It actually started here in Australia. It started at 5 a.m. Um, so it was a very, very early start on both Saturday and Sunday mornings. And I'm not used to getting up that early. Um, that's close to my bedtime <laughs> sometimes. I go to bed quite late. I'm a bit of a night owl. Um, no, I'm, used, I'm definitely always in bed before 5 a.m. But anyway, um, but it was really good to get up early and spend that 
that special time with um, my demonstrator friends, my leader friends from all around the world. Now, when we as demonstrators attend these events, Stampin' Up! really spoils us. Did you see my photos that I shared on the weekend of the things that we um, received as a gift for attending? Um, I, have, I have it here. So we received this beautiful, beautiful box and a matching card as well, which you can see up there on my display shelf. I've got my card up there. Um, but we received this beautiful um, little box. And I thought when this arrived, I thought, oh, what's in this little box? Um, some demonstrators had been raving about it, but because we didn't want to spoil the surprise for other leaders who hadn't yet received their gift, um, nobody was saying what it was, but they were all saying how amazing it was. And I was like, wow, I wonder what it is. When I got, when I received this in the mail um, and I opened it, I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh my goodness, Stampin' Up! just spoiled us so much. It was a Kindle. Do you know what a Kindle is? It's these amazing little ebook readers. So you can download, it's like a little tablet. I'll get it and show you. I've actually got it over on my other desk. Here it is here. It's this little tablet. It's a thin, lightweight little thing. Look, it's even got the Stampin' Up! brand on it. How exciting is that? That's so cool. And we can download books onto here. And you can download, I don't know how many books you can download. I'm not sure what the memory is on it. Um, but you can download so many books on here. And um, then you can take this with you. So rather than carrying a whole heap of heavy books, you can take it with you on the go. So you can make the um, print on there as large as you need it. Um, my eyesight's not great these days, but um, I do have my glasses and I've got new readers actually. Um, but I've made the print a little bit bigger to make it easier to read. Um, you can do all sorts of things like change all different sorts of things in the setting, but it is really amazing. And when we received this, Stampin' Up! had already loaded three ebooks for us to help us in our um, leadership and, and our businesses. So that was just such an amazing and generous gift. Stampin' Up! really spoils us and looks after us as demonstrators. So, um, yeah, I was very, very thankful for that. Um, I can now share, too, that um, I was actually um, had the honour of being asked to be one of the speakers for one of the breakout sessions um, to speak about my business and how I support my team. So I was very, very honoured to be able to um, share my experiences and things that I had learnt and, and how I do certain things. Um, and that was really, really amazing as well. So, um, yeah, you might see that there's an extra little card up there. Oh, it's a bit hard to see it. It's so far away, but I did receive a beautiful little thank you from Stampin' Up! as well for doing that. So, um, yeah, so that was really special. Very... Um, very honoured to have that um, experience and um, very nerve-wracking, but a very wonderful experience. So I had a few little stumbles in my speech, but uh, not as bad as I expected. Um, but uh, yeah, so I hope that uh, people found that it was helpful. Anyway, I'm going to pop my Kindle back over on my other desk. I've got some really, really great reading to do. So I'll have to make sure that I spend time um, doing that. Does anybody else have a Kindle? Do you, or are you avid readers? Do you prefer to use um, the traditional paperback books or hardcover books perhaps? Do you like reading? Are you a reader? I used to love reading. I have to say I don't do a lot of reading nowadays because um, I'm always so busy and I don't really take the time to sit and read. But I think now I've got that Kindle. I've actually started reading one of the books on there already. I think now that I've got that, because I'm so used to using tablets and devices um, with my business, I think I'm more likely to sit and read if it's on a tablet rather than picking up an actual book. I don't know. It's it sounds like crazy. It sounds like crazy, um, a crazy thought process, but I don't know. I, I just think that's, yeah, that's the way my brain works. But anyway, <laughs> I love learning. So uh, it's really great. You love reading, Rose? Yep. And you love books. 
Fantastic. Yeah, you love the hardcover books. Yeah. It's, uh, I grew up surrounded by a lot of books. My mum was an avid reader and uh, we always had a library of books at home. In fact, I remember, do you remember all of the old Agatha Christie books? Mum loved Agatha Christie books. She loved all the mystery type things. Um, but we had the big, do you remember the old um, big encyclopedias that we used to have? Like the really big, thick, they were like huge encyclopedia books. We had a full library of um, encyclopedias plus extra um, uh, extra books that went along with the, the collection as well that uh, mum and dad had collected when we were very young. And back before we had internet, those... When I was young, growing up, so in the 70s and 80s, before we started using technology and um, search engines and Google, um, they were invaluable having those encyclopedias. I found so much information in those and I used to love it when I was a kid to sit and look through the encyclopedia and just learn about things that, you know, was out of my, out of my little bubble um, it was just really, really awesome. I loved it. And then mum had a big collection of books and she would subscribe to Reader's Digest. So she'd get all the Reader's Digest books and yeah, always was surrounded by a lot of books. So I loved books growing up. I just got a point, got to a point in my life where I got really busy and um, I stopped reading so much, which is a bit sad because I do enjoy reading when I do pick up a book, especially fiction. Like I love stories. Um, I've got some favourite books from when I was a kid, which I still have actually. A couple, there's one, two in particular, that, uh, three in particular that jumped to my mind. One was about a horse, a, oh, what was it called? called? A, a horse for Xenia Y Zilch. Um, and it was a story about this girl who discovered this horse. I think she went on a camp or something. And I went on a few horse camps when I was a teenager. And I've always loved horses and ridden horses since I was quite young. Um, I don't anymore because of my back. But um, yeah, so there was that one. There was another one about a, kid, a cat princess. And she went um, missing. She got lost in a storm. I still have that one and I remember a little bit of the story. And there was another one about this boy called Ivan who was from overseas. And I can't remember the story specifically, but I've got the book still. I remember those three were, um, those three, were three of my favourites. Do you have a favourite book? Let me know in the comments what your favourite book is. So they were just three of mine growing up. Anyway, I guess we should jump into some Stampin' Up! news. That's just a little bit of a little bit of blurb about um yeah, what's been happening over the weekend and books and ebooks and reading and things. Um business books I find are a little bit more hard going. I think I've got a good imagination and I love storytelling. So I love stories that are fiction. So I do find that um a business related books and leadership related books are a little bit harder for me personally to read because I like to imagine the story in my mind. Do you do that when you're reading a story? You imagine it in your mind, um, which is a little bit difficult when you're reading leaders books. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. So I've got to work a bit harder at it. Um, but I've got some awesome books that I, that I do need to read. So I look forward to that. I might download some fiction books onto my Kindle as well. So I can reward myself perhaps when I read a chapter of my business book, I can then go and read a chapter of my fiction book. Maybe that's how I should do it. That's a good idea. Why did I not think of that before? <laughs> oh, Rose says, um, Rose says that she still has one from school and it was called Girl of the Limberlost. Oh, it sounds interesting. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's special, isn't it? When we've got those, those um, special books with special memories linked to them. Fantastic. Well, I've got some exciting news to share with you that is coming up in um, Stampin' Up! this week. And I did post about it early this morning. Um, I sent out an email early this morning to my email subscribers and if uh, my newsletter subscribers. And if you're not already subscribed to my newsletter, you can if you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening um, and get weekly creative inspiration as well. Then you can go to my blog, which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. Um, there will be a pop-up that will come up after about a few seconds that you can um, put in your details. If the pop-up doesn't come up for some reason, 
over on the right hand column of my blog there's a little box there that you'll see um, it says subscribe to my newsletter you can click on that um, and subscribe and then that way you will keep um, yeah up to date as I said and if you are a new subscriber to my newsletter you will automatically receive a free um, tutorial with three exclusive tutorials um, that I have designed specifically for my newsletter subscribers so um, feel free to jump over and um, subscribe hey Brenton how are you great to have you here we've just been talking about books and ebooks and I was sharing about backstage on the weekend and uh, so you'll have to go back and, and watch the replay after we've finished um, yeah watch the beginning part so um, all right well let me share with you what is happening um, this week so it's very very exciting there is going to be a seasonal sale Stampin' Up! is having a seasonal sale um, there is going to be products from the annual catalog that are going to be um, on special which is super super exciting so if you have got a wish list if you've had your eye on some products and you've been waiting for a special to come up now might be the time if you need to restock your products if you need to add to your collection um, of inks markers stamp and write markers stamp and blends ink refills always make sure you've got your ink refills for each of your ink pads as well because once the ink runs out in your ink pad you're going to need the ink refill to refill them so this special is going to be great now it's from the 11th to the 13th so that's wednesday wednesday the 13th of november oh sorry when sorry 13th to the 15th i don't know what i just said 13th to the 15th so from Wednesday the 13th till the 15th of November is when the special is going to be. So let me tell you what's going to be in the seasonal sales. Now it's on products just from the annual catalog. So that's the 2024 to 2025 annual catalog. Okay, there will be a promotion banner up on the website that will pop up. If you click on that um, on the 13th, 14th or 15th, it'll take you through to the products that are on special and you'll see the regular price and then you'll see the sale price. So um, bundles, so stamp and die bundles or stamp and punch bundles, one of which we're going to use today. 20% um, off designer series papers. So if you need to stock up on your papers, um, etc. Um, 10% off card stock and it's always a great idea to stock up on your card stock I'm forever stocking my card stock especially my neutrals my white and my vanilla I'm always stocking up specific specifically my white because I use a lot of white in my card making and so I always make sure I've at least got a couple of spare packs of white ready to go so when I know that there's a special coming up um, or whenever I'm going to put in, be putting in a large order, I always go through and check all of the colours that I've got. Um, and it will be on the assortment packs, I believe, as well. So there are assortment packs of cardstock if you want to get multiple colours. You can get them in the colour families. So we've got the Subtles, Brights, uh, Regals, there's the In Colours, and what am I missing? The Basics. Uh, basics? No, hang on. Neutrals. Did I say neutrals? I feel like I'm missing one. Anyway, um, but also on your basic colours as well. So we've got the basic white, the um, basic beige as well. They're great colours to have. Um, but yeah, anyway, 10% off all cardstock. So you can get them in assortment packs or individual colour packs as well. Um, there's also going to be 10% off ink. So that is your classic stampin pads okay so it excludes the um uh versamark stays on and memento they're not going to be on special but the classic stampin pads will be not on the bundles just on the individual pads so if you want to add some uh, add a couple to your collection you could add them in to an order um also to your stamp and write markers so your beautiful stamp and write markers they're also going to be 10 percent off and i'm just grabbing from my my stash over here your stamp and blends as well because they're all ink and your refills which i don't have any refills out to grab one of those because they're all 
packed away up on my shelf over there. It's hard because I'm trying to point in the opposite direction to the camera. So it's a bit confusing for my brain. <laughs> um, yes, if you need your ink refills. So, um, yeah, so that is very exciting. Now with the cardstock and the designer series paper, oh, sorry, with the cardstock, that's not including the close to my heart cardstock, okay? It's only the cardstock that is in the annual catalog. So, um, hey, Leslie, how are you? Lovely to have you here. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask me. I'm right here right now. You can ask me if you've got questions about the seasonal sale. Um, there's, a little, there's a little list of the things. I went into more detail in my newsletter, um, including pages on where you can find some of these things as well, which we might have a little look when we put the catalogue down. Um, yeah, so um, that is a very, very exciting time. So be sure that you check that out on Wednesday the 13th to Friday the 15th um, because you'll be able to save a lot of money. And actually, this bundle here, the Label with Love bundle, that's the one we're going to play with today because it's one of the brand new ones that I just got and I showed, showed it in a... Um, unboxing video last week I think it was Thursday I did an unboxing video and that's one of the ones that I just recently got but now it's going to be on special as a bundle so what a shame I didn't wait but that's okay I didn't know that the um, sale was coming otherwise I would have waited for that one um, well actually no because I think I got I think I got this stamp set in the last stamp set sale and I purchased the yeah, and I purchased the punch separately. That's right. Yeah, I didn't get them as a bundle. I got them as individual products because the stamp set was reduced. That's what it was. Yep. So that's okay. I still made a saving. Good, good. Just have to remind myself that. <laughs> All right. Um, and we're going to be playing with some DSP and some cardstock, and then we'll add in some ribbon and bling. We might add in a little bit of technique. Um, but I think the project today will probably be fairly simple that anyone can put together. You'll notice that I am wearing my orange butterfly today, and that is for a very good reason. This is one of my erstwhile brooches. Um, I forget the name of the actual brooch. If you want to know what the name of it is, please feel free to send me a message, and I'd love to tell you. If ever you want any question, if any ever you've got any questions about anything, whether it's Stampin' Up! related or about my Erstwhile to brooches or my earrings, feel free to uh, let me know and I can give you the actual name so that you can search for them and see if you can um, get them, um, if that's something that, that you like. But anyway, so Orange Butterfly, remember that. Okay, so um, that is the big news for this week. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to put the camera down onto the desktop and get crafting. Um, and I'm excited to create this card with you today. So if you would like to craft along, feel free to pull out your crafting supplies, of course, and craft along with me, whether or not that's on your own project or something similar to mine. You might like to pick up on the colors, the color combination that I'm using. You might like to pick up on the, um, the layout that we create. So, um, but if not, if you want to just sit back, relax and watch, then feel free to do that as well. All right, well, let's get started. I'm going to cover up the camera while I tip it down onto the desktop, just so I don't make you all dizzy. Here we go. Bear with me one moment. Don't go anywhere. I'll just get this set up. Oops, my cable. There we go. My cable got a bit stuck just then. All right, so I'll tighten all my clamps up. This might just be a little bit squeaky and clunky for a minute. I'll just have to tighten everything up really tight so that it doesn't move while I'm filming. Okay, straighten everything up. There we go. Put the lights down on the desktop and see how that looks oh not too bad today all right um actually i'll leave my keyboard there for a moment because what i'm going to do so any of the products that you see today or if you're looking for um the sale and you would like to shop with me um if you're not oh my camera is a little bit wonky actually let's just straighten that up a tad um 
if you're looking for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're here in Australia and you don't already have a demonstrator, I would love to look after you. So um, please feel free to shop with me. Please feel free to get in contact with me if there's anything I can help you with or you have any questions. Um, but yes, you can shop with me a couple of different ways. Um, you can find my online store either via my blog at Mandy's um, papercraftcreations.blogspot.com or mandywithabee.stampinup.net. As I said, if you go to my blog, you will also find my newsletter subscription as well as some other things as well. And lots and lots of creative inspiration content there as well. Um, there is also creative inspiration there on my um, website as well. But this is the sale. Okay. Um, this is the catalogue that the sale is going to be from. The sale is Wednesday the, uh, Wednesday the 13th to Friday the 15th. And today we are going to be playing with the Labelled with Love stamp set. Now, first of all, I wanted to show you a couple of things. If you are looking for the products, if you've got a um, physical copy of the catalogue and you want to have a look to see the products that are on special, if you prefer to look through the paper catalogue rather than online, um, if you have a look at the sweets from pages 34, actually, hang on a minute. Yep, from pages 34 through to pages 55, you'll find all the sweets there. Now, as part of the sweets, you're going to have the, the designer series paper. Now, the designer series papers are going to be on special. Plus, you're going to have the bundles. Now, the bundles being 20% off during the sale, normally if you purchase a bundle, so this with this one, for instance, is the stamps and the dies. Normally, you if you order them together as a bundle using the bundle code, which is down here, you will get 10% on that bundle. But during this, the seasonal sale, you're going to get an additional 10%. So it'll be a total of 20% off on the bundle. So it's definitely well worth um, grabbing any of those bundles you've had your eyes on during this sale. So we've got the Mediterranean Blooms and then you've got the um, the DSP as well, the, D the Designer Series Paper. It's also going to be 20% off. So if you've got 20% off your, um, your bundle and 20% off your paper like you are making a big saving and then if you want to get the embellishments then add them to your um, order as well if you want any of the coordinating cardstock that goes with one of those um, suites then you have got a list of the main colors that are used down here as well so that'll help you choose um, which colors to purchase if you're purchasing cardstock or inks or your coloring tools such as your stamp and write markers or stamp and blends Okay, so it's the same with all of the suites. They're all kind of laid out differently. Some of them will have different um, embellishment um, products. This is the paper we're going to be using today. Now, interestingly, we're using it with the Labelled with, labeled with Love um, stamp set, which is not from this suite, but is going to coordinate beautifully with this paper. And we're actually going to be using um, some of the floral papers and some of the the B side or the reverse side of the papers. Again, this one is going to be on special. So there's lots of different ones. You'll see some of the suites have got added components. This one's got um, embossing folders and embellishments. You can always add them into your order as well if you like to. This is a nice bright and fun designer series paper. You've got a fantastic um, sentiment stamp set with coordinating dies. You've got a few little decorative elements in there as well. Um, but that's a great bundle as well and so forth. So you can go through all of those. Then if you're looking for um, some of those bundles, if you come over to page 57, you'll see that you have got the bundles here. Now this one, for instance, the Layers of Beauty bundle, um, this one has got the... Um, not sure how this one is going to work actually because it said stamp and die bundles or stamp and punch bundles this one's also got as part of the bundle the layering beauty masks so i'll be interested to see because when you purchase that one as a bundle it comes with the decorative masks 
So I'll be interested to see what they're going to do with that one. Maybe that one won't be included. I'm not sure. We'll find out when we see it on the um, the website on Wednesday. But that one does come with um, the layering masks as well. As to whether or not that one will be on special, not sure yet. But then we've got this one. This is the one we're going to be using today on page 58, the Labelled With Love stamp set. Now, this one's an interesting one because you can either get it with the um, stamp set and a punch or instead of a punch you can choose a die now when you get the punch this is the punch here the labeled with love punch it coordinates beautifully with the stamp set and you do have an outline in the stamp set of the label if you want to use that the images on the front of the stamp case are just shown at 95 percent so the actual stamps are a little bit bigger However, if you prefer dies rather than punches, you can get the die and in the die set, it actually has three labels. So each pass through with the, um, the die, you can actually die cut three labels at once. Whereas with the punch, you can only punch once. Uh, you can only punch, sorry, you can punch more than once. You can only punch one at a time. So it just depends exactly the same price but you can choose which way you want to do your bundle, okay? So there are two codes up here on this page, on page 58, for the bundle. One is for the stamp set and dies. One is for the stamp set and punch, depending on which one you would like. But both of those are going to be 20% discount during the seasonal sale. So it's a great way to go. The same with this one, the keeping tabs, same thing. Um, so these two are quite unique. It's the first time Stampin' Up! has given us those options like that to have either the punch or the dies. This one is the same. Um, I actually have this stamp set and the dies for this one, not the punch. So um, again, you can either choose the punch or the die or the punch, depending on which um, tool you prefer to work with. So if you don't have a die cutting machine, then the punch is a great idea. And I love label punches. They are so fantastic for so many different projects. So they're very, very versatile. Um, then we've got some more bundles here as well that are all going to be 20% off. We've got all of these ones. These ones. These ones. So you can see I've got a couple of uh, labels in here. So I might need to get a new bundle. <laughs> These are my some of my wish list items. Um, the beautiful butterflies. Oh, that could have that would have been a beautiful one to use today as well. But we're using one of my new ones. Um, but I have this bundle as well, which I got just recently as well. And we I think we did use that on a Facebook Live a couple of weeks ago, actually. So we have had a little play with that on a Facebook Live. So it's good to use something different. Um, this one is a gorgeous one. This one has been very popular this year. The spotlight on nature. And the coordinating, coordinating dies that comes with this one are circle dies and they have detailed edging on them and you get so many different sizes. In fact, you get 12, 12 different sizes of, um, or 12 different dies, 12, 12 different circles you get. Um, and they are really, really beautiful. And you can use those dies on any projects, not just coordinating with the Spotlight on Nature. So we've got these ones and these ones. There's lots and lots of bundles to choose from. Um, so that goes up to page 73. Now there might be, there's other papers, um, other designer series papers that are scattered through the catalog. Um, so you will find them um, on the online store. You'll find them all. There is a list in the back in the index. If you go right to the back on pages 140 and 141, you will find the list of all of the products in the different categories. So if we go to, um, let's see, paper and packaging, under the paper and packaging heading, you've got, if you just go down, you've got cardstock on pages 135 to 139. And then your designer series papers, it shows you all the different designer series papers um, not all of them are shown with a large amount of the paper in the catalogue. Some of them are just a little sneak peek. But if you go to the website, the online store, um, you'll find them all there in with more detail. 
Um, then we've got punches and stamp sets. So that'll give you an indication of which pages to go through to, to have a look if they are bundled. And then you've got the dies as well. If you're looking for colours for um, your inks and your colouring tools, if you go over to page 135 up to page 139, that's where you're going to find all of the colours. Okay? And if you're not that familiar with the catalogue, you've got all of the you've got each of the individual colours listed here with each of their individual codes. Down the side, it tells you if it's cardstock. So that's the row of codes for cardstock, and it shows you the different colours. Um, the classic Stampin' Pads, which is the ones I showed you before. These ones. Then you've got your ink refills. Remember, the ink refills will also be discounted, 10% um, off those. And then you've got your Stampin' Blends Combo. So the Stampin' Blends Combo, they come with two markers in each combo, a light and a dark. Okay, um, then if you want colour a cardstock assortment packs, they'll be down the bottom here. Um, there's also designer series paper assortment, sorry, 12 by 12 cardstock assortment, 6 by 6 designer series paper packs in each of the colour families. You've got your marker assortments. The Stampin' Pad bundles, they are not discounted, just so you know. And um, the ink refill bundles, I don't think they are either. I think it's just if you're purchasing them individually. So anyway, so that's a little bit of an explanation. So hopefully that helps you. And then you've got the in colors over here and then your basics um, here as well. Your basic beige, very vanilla, basic white and basic black. And then your bronze and ivory stamp and blends. Now, that's all the colours. I just wanted to mention with your Stampin' Blends, if you are looking for the natural tone blends, which some of which we were using last weekend in our project, they are just back a couple of pages. On page 131, um, you find all the natural tone blends up here. Okay. Now, um, I was telling you when I was using them last week, I was using the number of the marker as well as telling you which um, color combo they were from. So we've got the, the light, medium light, medium, medium deep and deep. If ever you're not sure, feel free to ask me. I've actually got them written down here in my um, catalog so that I always remember which one's which. So feel free to ask me about those. Okay, so that's a little bit about the sale. Um, if you've got any questions, just remember that the Memento is not part of the sale. The Versamark is not part of the sale and the Stays On Ink is also not part of the sale, okay? Because they are third-party products. They're not Stampin' Up! specific branded products, okay? Hopefully that's helped somebody um, understand or hopefully that's helped all of you understand what's happening with the sale. All right, let's look at the product we're using today. Lots of talking today. Hey, I'm getting thirsty. <laughs> uh, hey, Julie, how you going? Great to have you here. Um, a great bundle. Yes, definitely. It definitely is. I agree, Brenton. So this one, the Labeled with Love, has got so many different little elements. Now, it is a two-step stamp set. So some of these images are two-step stamped. Um, that is a technique. It's an easy technique that anyone can use. Basically, you're combining two stamps, uh, two stamped images to make one stamp, or you can use them individually in different ways. So the flower one here, I did show this on my um, unboxing the other day, so you might have already seen me show this, but I'll go through it again for those of you who may have missed it. So for this one, we've got the leaves and then the flowers. So you can certainly use the flowers just on their own, but if you want the flowers to have leaves, um, you can stamp the leaves first and then stamp the flowers or vice versa. It means that you can stamp them in different colours. So you can stamp your leaves in green, and you can stamp your flowers in, say, peach pie. Peach pie is one of the colours I've got out to use today. With the present here, you've got the solid shape of the present, and then you've got the confetti detail. So again, you can stamp them in two different colours. Um, we've got an extra little stamp set here, which is little presents. So those little presents, you could even stamp them over the confetti. 
and then you've got your butterfly here so you've got the outline of your butterfly or the the um the lined image of your butterfly and you could just stamp that and then color that with your preferred coloring tools okay or you can use um, watercolor pencils or whatever is your favorite coloring tool or you can do two-step stamping and you can um yes i can rose i definitely can i'll show you that to you in a moment rose would like me to show the difference between basic white basic beige and crumb cake yep no worries happy to do that for you rose just um, bear with me one moment with the butterfly you can stamp the outline uh, the the lined image sorry of the butterfly and then if you want to color it really easily you just stamp you just ink up the solid shape and you stamp that over the top of the line shape and that'll give you a colored butterfly so easy right so we might have a little play with that and then you've got the outline of the label as i mentioned before and you've got all these little sayings verses and sentiments um, and these all fit inside of the label so that you can use them in um, collaboration with each other i believe too that these images also fit in the label so we are going to have a little play with this stamp set I'm very excited it's brand new I haven't used it yet so what is the first thing we do when we get a brand new photopolymer stamp set can anyone tell me I say it all the time <laughs> so you should all know by now if you are a regular viewer um, and our beautiful punch we're going to use that to coordinate as well today so we're going to use some designer series paper as well we will get to that um the first thing we do when we get our stamp sets is we're going to take the backing plastic off so you'll see that the images are actually printed inside the case so we can take our stamps off exactly dimity thank you we have to clean our stamps these are photopolymer stamps so they come with a bit of um oily residue from the manufacturing when you get them and that tends to repel the ink so it's important that you clean your photo photopolymer stamps before you try to use them so that you get a nice clear um, stamped image so the way that i like to do that is i like to take my simply chamois different people do it different ways some people like to just rub their hand over it some people like to rub it on their skin for me I have very dry skin um, I get a bit of dermatitis and things like that so that's not really a good technique for me and also to rub it on there I kind of feel like if you've got oils on your skin and we have natural oils on our skin right but if you've touched something else that's a little bit greasy or something I feel like if you do that you're adding the oils to the stamps anyway so I like to clean them with my simply chamois or if you have the stamp and scrub you can use the stamp and scrub so we're going to start and do that first i am going to pull out those cardstocks for you rose to show you if i forget please remind actually you know what i'm going to grab them out now i'll put them beside me so that i remember and i've already got basic white out so basic beige and crumb cake i'll quickly grab those I'll also grab out vanilla as well, Rose, so that you can see the difference with the vanilla as well. All right, I've just got them beside me so that I can show you in a moment. I'll just keep talking about these stamps for the moment and then we'll get to that in a moment. All right, so we're going to give each one of these a little quick clean. Um, in fact, what you can do is you can clean a couple at a time. I did this last time, but if you do too many at once, it can be a little bit... Um, difficult so just either use your um simply chamois or your stamp and scrub let me grab my stamp and scrub and i do have my stamp and scrub here i've got oh my one of my little feet has come unstuck i've had my this one for years and years and years it has two sides it has um one side that you can put water on or you can use the stamp and mist spray to give your stamps a really good clean and condition 
and then the other side you keep that as a dry side so that you can dry it off on that side I actually haven't got any water on mine at the moment I might show you how to use this we'll do the first ones with the, the chamois and then I'll show you how to use the um, stamp and scrub too because it's not something that I demonstrate very often I tend to pretty much just use my chamois so we're going to give it a scrub on our chamois give it a little twist and then we're going to grab some scrap paper hang on a second grab some scrap over here some scrap paper and we're going to make sure that we stamp it off to remove the water you can even give it like a little twist which also helps okay then I usually leave mine out to air dry as well just so that we're not putting any moisture back into the case we certainly don't want any mold or anything like that then I'm going to pop them onto the coordinating image in the case okay so then I know and then this little flimsy piece I sometimes keep those because you can use those as window sheets um, and yeah you can use them for other craft projects all right the next one let's use the um, simply the sorry the stamp and scrub so we'll do two of the sentiments this time Now, I'll just grab, I think I've got a water spritzer here. Hang on, let me see. Have I got one? Oh, yep, I've got a water spritzer here. This just has water in it. Actually, is there water in it? Oh, yes, there is. I'm just going to spritz that. I've got mine labelled. Whoops, put that over there. I've got mine labelled, so I always know which is my wet side and which is my dry side. So I just use my Dymo label for that. Or well, you can write it on in Sharpie if you don't have a Dymo labeler. So just add a bit of water. If you're running it under the tap, just run it under. You don't want it sopping wet. Um, you just want it to be moist. I just squirted my um, keyboard. Whoops. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to rub it on there. You'll see mine foams up. Now, the reason my mine foams up is because I have used the um, spray on there. And then on this dry side... I'm just going to rub it on there to dry them off. Now, when I've used the spray, hang on, I'll show you. And this is, these are the Stampin' Mist. Now, this is the old label. The new label is black and white because mine is quite old. I've had it sitting there. It lasts forever. So <laughs> it lasts a really, really long time. Um... I've got a small spritzer bottle, which is an old one. I think it now comes with, I'm not sure if it still comes with a small bottle. Does any, has anybody bought it recently or is the large bottle with the spritzer? I'm not sure of the size bottles now. But anyway, it is. Um, it does come, there is a spritzer. I'm just not sure if it's this size bottle or the bigger size bottle. And you just squirt that on there or you can squirt it directly onto your stamps too. And then give them a scrub and then dry them off whenever I have used the Stampin mist however even though I dry them off on here I always do like to then take it to my chamois just to clean it off on water as well because the chamois just has water so just to re remove any of that um, residue you don't have to do that but I like to do that because I just like to Make sure that my stamps stay in good condition. And then again, stamp it off onto scrap paper to make sure they're nice and dry before you put them away. And then that's how we condition our stamps before we use them. Okay, and then we'll pop them back in here. There we go. So we'll quickly do the other ones. I'll use, I think I'll do the, um, make sure your block is dry before you put the next stamp on there. I think I'll just use my chamois, so that's quicker for me. Give it a good scrub. It's a little bit squeaky. Pop that in there. So 
we do this now before we start then we're ready to go and then we can just pull them out quickly out of the um the case and we don't have to worry but if you do multiples at a time it does save time if you have a big block a larger one of the larger size blocks you could do several at a time I'm hoping that I'm cleaning these well enough because I'm trying to do it very, very fast. When they first, when you first get them on the brand new sheet, they are quite a bit sticky. So just roll it up. I tend to pull the plastic back away from the stamp and just roll the edge up like that. Never try to pull them straight off because you could damage your stamps or even tear them. So good clean, dry them off. Sometimes you might even have to do that a couple of times. It depends on how um, oily they are when you get them. Sometimes some of them need um, extra cleaning, especially if it's a um, if it's a large um, solid image. See how I just pulled that off carefully there. So just get the corner up, just peel that off carefully with your long especially with your long sentiments there we go all right and especially with your sentiments too just make sure you get them really really clean my chamois is a little bit dry where's that water actually i had that water here where did i put that water spritzer Let's spray a bit of water normally i clean i wash my chamois out under the under the tap in the kitchen tap but I forgot to today, so I'll just spray that with a little bit of, that feels a bit better. So yeah, especially important to clean your sentiment stamps too, to get a nice clean um, image. Okay, so they are ready to go now. So I'll put those in here. I love the to and from because you can use that on the tag to um, make a little gift tag. So that's another great idea there as well. Okay, then what I do with the, the um because you get the two pieces of plastic that they come between, there's a more solid piece and a flimsy piece. The flimsy piece, you can do what you like with that, keep it or get rid of it. Um, the solid piece, you can just close your stamps and be done with it. I find sometimes just depending um, where you're putting them, how you're storing them, the stamps can sometimes stick to the other side. So I like to put this heavy clear sheet over the top. Normally I would let them air dry first to make sure they're completely dry before I do that. But we're going to be using them, so um, it's all good. Okay, so that is um, how to um, clean your stamps. All of these products that I've just used are available in the online store, um, including the, the water spritzers. If you're looking for spritzers, they come in a two pack. Um, they're very handy. And with your ink refills, you can actually mix color. Um, I'll show you, I've got one here. You can actually mix some of your ink refill in with water or with alcohol and you can use that as a little spritz spray to make really cool backgrounds you can do different colors together um, you can yeah you can do all sorts of techniques with that in fact that might be for another day um, to show you some techniques with those as well but yeah I always have a water one and um, for especially for water coloring too and I've got a few that have got colors mixed up in them Okay, so there's a few extra little bits and pieces today. Just putting those away out of the way. Okay, now Rose asked the difference between some of our colours. Okay, now... Um, this is as best as I can show you on camera. Of course, the colors aren't going to be exactly true on camera um, because of the nature of the lighting and things like that. In fact, I'm just trying to adjust my lights to get that down over there as best as I can. All right, 
So this is our basic white, okay? So basic white, this is very vanilla, basic beige and crumb cake. So if I show you the comparison between the white and the crumb cake, you can see there's quite a contrast there between the white and the, the crumb cake. And then you've got the white and the beige, okay? So it's the white and the beige. The white and the vanilla, I think we all pretty much know the white and the vanilla. The white has got more of a yellowy, oh, sorry, the vanilla, very vanilla, has got more of a um, yellow base to it. I really like the very vanilla with these neutral tones, but the white also works. So, yeah, so that's the difference there. So you can see the vanilla goes really well with the, the, it's more sort of a neutral base. We also too do have the new Willow White 12 by 12 cardstock that was just released with the um, scrapbooking, um, the September scrapbooking brochure. There's a Willow White, which I do have some of that too. Let me pull that out because that is a different white. I'm just finding it. Hang on a minute. Not sure where I've put it. I think I have a pack of it somewhere, but I can't find it. Um, do I ever use basic beige? Yes, I use it a lot actually, Rose. I love the basic beige. It's one that I use um, fairly often. Um, this is one of the new scrapbooking workshop kits that was released, which we're not playing with today. But um, I think in here it has some of the new Willow White. Let me have a look and see if that's in this one. I just can't find the full pack that I thought I had ordered. I'm pretty sure I have ordered it. I'm just not sure where I've put it. Is this the one? Yep. Okay, so this is the new Willow White. And I'll show you the difference between the two whites. I'm not sure how it will come up on camera. But the Willow White is sort of got more of a um, blue base to it. Whereas the, it's probably hard to show you on, actually I might show you on the crumb cake. We'll get rid of the vanilla because I think the vanilla is throwing it. So there's the crumb cake and there's the um, willow, is it white, white willow and this is the basic white. So the basic white is a little bit more sort of yellowy based, I guess, than the willow white. The willow white is a bit more blue based. It's a bit brighter. So yeah, can you see the difference in the two whites there? Yeah, so there you go. So you've got a couple of different options of the whites as well. So I hope that helped. You can see the difference, Rose. Fantastic. Oh, yes, it's coming up, Dimity. Fantastic. Thank you. So there you go. So I'll pop that one back in with the scrapbooking workshop. This is going to be a future um, class that I'm going to be holding. Um, this is a really, really beautiful, um, a really beautiful scrapbooking workshop. Okay. All right, there we go. In fact, basic beige might even work with the colors we're using today, Rose. Okay. The designer series paper that we're using today, as I mentioned before, oops, let me just move those lights out of the way again. I pulled them right down close to my desk to show you those colors. Um, this is the To Market 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now I will admit when I first saw this paper, I thought I'm probably never gonna use that paper. And initially I didn't buy it. But then I saw some projects made with it and I thought, oh my goodness, I actually really like that. So I then bought some and I love it. Now, let me just see if I can find all of the colors. I have chopped into it. So one, two, three, four, five. There's another sheet I'm missing there. 
which one is it? I've got some pieces that I've cut in six by six. It's this one. Okay, so that is the back side. That's the front. That's so on one side they are quite busy patterns. Oh no, that's the same as that one. Okay, there's another one I'm missing. Wait a sec, let me find it. Is it this one? This one, I think. Yep, this one. Don't have much left of that one. I think I've used a fair bit of that one. Oh, hang on. Wait, did I just find a piece? Is it that one? Oh, there we go. That's all I've got left of that one. So <laughs> I've used a fair bit of that. Okay. So the front pieces are quite busy, quite busy patterns, as you can see. But if you don't like the front side, don't forget there is always, oh, I just hit my lights, the reverse side. So look at all these cool patterns. I'll move that green one away from that one, break that up a little bit. There we go. You've got some wood grain here. You've got some um, garden green. You've got this beautiful floral pattern, which is what we're going to be using today. You've got some sort of gingham, sort of like country look gingham. You've got this beautiful um, polka dot. We're going to be using that with that. And then you've got these beautiful, um, these beautiful purples. We've got the, um, what purples have we got in this one? Wait, let me check the colours on here. It's Blackberry Bliss. Garden green, pecan pie, pumpkin pie, and real red are the colours that are in the DSP. And you've got different tones of those colours in there as well. So, yeah. And these ones here, these little shopping bags and little tubs um, and little baskets, they are really fun. Even if you don't like the other products in the suite, the paper is really fun because you can cut out the little veggies or you can cut out those little... Um, bouquets where were the bouquets that I had before they're on one of these there's bouquets of flowers here somewhere oh there they are they've slipped in behind you can cut out the little bouquets of flowers and have them in the baskets or in the little shopping bags I've just seen some really beautiful um projects made with those actually the flowers will look really nice in this little bag because this kind of looks like a little bit of a calico bag so they'd be really cute in um, one of those. So that's what we're going to be using today. And this paper and all of the designer series papers from the annual catalogue are going to be 20% um, off during the seasonal sale. And I love this one. How beautiful is that paper for a background? It's really, really pretty. So I've got some smaller pieces here of the ones we're going to use today. I'll keep hitting that light. We've got those ones. There's even some wood here too. So the wood is actually on the back of this, this one, this florally one. But they're just really beautiful patterns. So they're the ones we're going to use today. So we'll pull those out. We might even use a bouquet of flowers. We'll see. I think we're probably going to use the stamps though, actually. You could, though, use the, if you just had the DSP, you could use the flowers for um, this project that we're going to create today. Okay. So these, I think we're mainly going to be focusing on these two. And how beautiful do they coordinate together? Look at that. I love that Stampin' Up! just coordinates the colours for us. So the colours that I've pulled out today are Garden Green, which is in the leaves. I've got Pumpkin Pie. I've got Peach Pie. And I've got Petal Pink. Now, excuse my label of my Petal Pink. It has faded. It's not actually that colour. Okay. Um, something that I, am, I also thought that I would share today which I shared on my um, unboxing video the other day on Thursday, if you saw that, is now in the online exclusives is available to everyone the Colour Coach, otherwise known as the Colour Wheel. So you can purchase this now in the online store, in the online exclusives. Just look for Colour Coach and you'll find it. Now this can help us to with deciding on the colours that we want to use. So, for instance, if we want to use monochromatic and there's instruction, uh, there's 
detailed descriptions of each of the color theories on the back okay um, if you want to use do more of a monochromatic um, color then you turn the wheel to the colors that you want to use so we so if we do um, say um, pumpkin pie now it doesn't include the in colors and peach pie is one of the in colors so if we base it on pumpkin pie we could go either with pumpkin pie and pecan pie because they would work together we could include um, cajun craze as well because those three colors go together so yeah if we have a look to see now petal pink is over here in the pinks it's sort of the pinks to the oranges which is really interesting because it's saying here if we're looking at the monochromatic scale here petal pink calypso cor coral cajun craze and pumpkin pie all go nicely together which is really interesting so you can combine those colors now if we're going over the back if we have a look at what it says for monochromatic it says monochromatic just starting out Choose one color that you love and pair it with shades and tints of the same color. Your colors will always match. So if ever you're not sure about colors, um, you can do a monochromatic. Now, if you're not doing um, monochromatic, you can also do any of the other types of colors. You might want to do complementary colors. You might want to choose your own colors. You might want to do triadic colors or analogous colors. Um, now, analogous are choose three colors that are side by side on the color wheel. These color neighbors work together wonderfully to create harmony and balance. So if you have a look um, over here, you've got the analogous here. That's this big arc here. So you've got lots and lots of those colors in that color wheel that you can, sorry, excuse the um, answering machine in the background if you can hear that, that's what that is. Um, so yeah, so you can choose those different colors that all coordinate. So you've got a big scale of colors there. Now triadic, I was showing triadic the other day um, during my unboxing but i actually realized after i finished filming that i sh i did it wrong i showed the wrong thing because triadic are in a triangle sort of triangularly opposite each other if that's a term so for instance if i looked at let's go to um, pumpkin pie so if i look at pumpkin pie then i can see that line goes to pumpkin pie and I can have a look at these other colors that will also coordinate. So if I move it to there, I've got the garden green, which is here, which is in the DSP. And that's what they've used on this one is a garden green with the pumpkin pie. Then you can also incorporate gorgeous grape. So there you go. Now they might not be colors that you would normally use or that you'd, all, or what, that you'd normally put together, but in terms of color theory, they work. So triadic is Craft with colour that are evenly spaced around the colour wheel. Go beyond the primary colours of red, yellow and blue for something unexpected. So there you go, because the purples are in the blue, the blue tones, blue to blue to red tones. So there you go. So we could always throw purple in if you wanted to. But I thought today, so I just wanted to explain a little bit about that. Then you've got the complementary colours and you've got the um, analogous colours as well. So um uh so complementary complementary you've got them on opposite sides monochromatic and then the analogous is this big one and for the triadic you're using these three little windows that are in the inner circle there okay so that's kind of how you use the color wheel and then your neutrals are all listed on the back here Okay, so these neutral colors are the perfect companions to almost any color combination. They're here to work for you, adding subtly to or drama, subtlety, I should say subtlety, not reading that correctly, or drama to your projects. So any of those um, basic colors that I was showing you just before, the basic beige, the crumb cake, the vanilla, the basic white, they are in the neutrals. So you can add them in and they will work with almost any um other color combo 
So there you go. So that's a little bit about the color wheel. So they are available in the online store in the online exclusives. Um, and you might need to scroll. I think they were a couple of pages overall on the second page or something of the online exclusives. So check that out. All right, let's get going. Okay, so um, we are going to create a card. We're going to have a landscape card today. Um, I wanted to use some of these labels in a landscape, uh, in a portrait orientation going across the card. Um, just doing a very, with some very simple layers. Okay, so I've done a lot of talking today, um, but hopefully it's given you lots of tips and ideas. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit first of how these two step stamps work. So I've got a little piece of basic white here. So we'll put some of these stamps on some blocks. Just take that plastic piece off the top. And whoops, oh, sorry about that noise. I'm dropping my blocks. Okay, so we've got um, our solid shape butterfly. Put that on straight. We've got our um, outline. Um, we've got our flowers got our flowers and then we've got our petals now with the petals of the flowers um, they are a bit stretchy okay because we've got the cutout in the middle so that they line up properly with the flowers the best thing to do is to pop them down onto some cardstock okay and then take your block to let it relax into its natural form and then take your block to your stamp and pick them up that way okay um, I probably am not going to use the presents today, so I might leave that. Um, yep. Oh, and then we're going to need the label. So we'll put that on a block now too. Same with the, the label. It's a bit stretchy and because you've got the cutout there in the middle. So put it face down as if you were going to stamp with it. Let it relax into its natural shape on the... Um, the cardstock because you do want this to match up with your um with your punch as well and then you can pick it up that way if you want to double check you can try lining it up with the um the image on the top of your punch or with the the um cut out in the bottom so you just line that up there and make sure that that's kind of lined up you can cut out a uh, punch out a template as well. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention with your punches: make sure that you clean your um, that you do some punching with your punch on some scrap paper first before you use it, because these also come with manufacturing oil because they've oiled them so that the springs work. Because these have got um, heavy springs inside them and they've been oiled, and the oil does leak through the punch a little bit when they're brand new. So just make sure that you use, I just use um, copy paper that I'm, you know, throwing out if I've printed something that I don't need, you know, just scrap paper. And I just do several punches. So I've, I've done a few sheets of these to make sure that I'm um, getting clean punches without any oily residue. Okay, so you just keep punching, punching, punching until you get oily residue. Use scrap so that you are not using your good, uh, wasting your good cardstock. I don't know if you can see here, but you can see a little bit of oily residue just there on the corner. You'll see it on some of the corners. That's the oil coming out of the punch. So make sure that you do um, prime your punch and get rid of that those oils before you start working with your punch. Otherwise, it would leave oily residue on your stamped images. Okay, so just a little bit of preparation with your new products when you get them with your um, your stamps and your punches. Not with your dies. Your dies seem to just work. The dies and the embossing folders, they're fine. They just work straight away as soon as you get them. So it's just a matter of um, working with these particular um, products. All right, so... Right, let's see. Now we've got garden green for our leaves. So I'm going to stamp the leaves first. So 
we'll just stamp them over here. Um, I might leave a little bit of room so that I can punch. Now, one thing to check is which direction your punch is going to work on with your cardstock because it depends if it's cut horizontally like that or if it's cut vertically. Okay, so just always test so that you know which way your shape is going to, which way your punch is going to um, punch out your shape. Okay, so I'll just ink that back up again. So now I know it's going to punch out this way. So I'm going to stamp it like this. Okay, so that's my leaves. And I'm going to give that a clean straight away because that's a dark colour. And the dark colours like to try and stain up your photopolymer. So the quicker you clean them, the less staining you'll get. Give that a clean. Stamp it clean on my... Um, scrap paper and then we're going to take the flowers now I thought I might go a lighter color with the flowers and try the um, peach pie so we'll do the peach pie now which way up do these flowers go you can always have a look on the case to check which way up your flowers go to make sure you've got them up the right way and you can always test them on a scrap piece of paper first all right now with these ones, I'll just move this up a little bit so you can see. We're going to line, I'll just ink that up again. We're going to line those flowers up in amongst those leaves. Okay, so we've got the little holes in there to line them up. And let's see if I get it right first go. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes to get it right. Oh, that's not too bad. Could have been up a little bit higher. But that kind of gives you the general idea. Then, you better clean that stamp again. Oh, you love your colour coach, Leslie? Yeah, they're great, aren't they? They're so fantastic. Um, Dimity says it's not as thick as a basic white. Oh, the um, is that the white willow you're saying is not as thick? The white willow is not as thick as the basic white. Oh, okay, there you go. I didn't really, I don't have ink on my fingers. I'll just have a feel of that. It does feel slightly, slightly lighter weight, I think, than the basic white. Yeah, it's not too bad, though. Maybe just a fraction. It's quite close. It's not as thin as the um, two-tone cardstock, but it's maybe a little bit lighter weight than the basic white. Yeah. It is heavy enough weight, though, to be um, a background piece if you're doing scrapbooking. So it is heavy enough for that, whereas the two-tone cardstock is a bit thinner. Um, yeah. So thanks for that, Dimity. I hadn't realised that it was a little bit different in weight. Okay, so then we can stamp the outline around that. So let's see. Let's go with the uh, pumpkin pie outline. In fact, you could even stamp, it probably was a better idea to stamp the outline first because now I've got to try and line this up. <laughs> I probably should have done it the other way first. But there we go. Look at that. That's not too bad. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. And if you wanted the leaves even lighter, you could use one of the lighter greens or you could stamp off the um, garden green first before... Um, stamping it onto your piece but isn't that just a pretty little piece it's a pretty little label a little accent piece for your project and then we're going to punch that out there we go so isn't that just so pretty really pretty now that's just given me a different idea um well I'll just leave that one there for the moment and I'll show you the butterfly. Okay. Now with the butterfly, I love the idea of adding in the purple now that they said that. I might bring in a little bit of the, um, what was the deep colour, the deep purple, the Blackberry Bliss. Let's bring in a little bit of Blackberry Bliss. Blackberry Bliss. Hmm. I'm just thinking, do I want 
a deep blackberry bliss butterfly i'm thinking that's going to be very deep so hang on a minute i've got all my bits and pieces on the opposite sides today i don't know what i'm doing i think i need to move my keyboard out of the way and then move my stamps over that side there we go so i'm just going to have a look to see how deep that is because i think that's going to be very deep in color that's very deep and if i stamped it off oh that's a bit lighter that might be better or um i should clean that one straight away because those the um deeper purpley based colors and the deeper reds whoops wrong one they like to um stain the the um stamps quite a bit now it doesn't affect the, how the stamps work they'll still work really well but um, they'll just be a little bit coloured. So now my stamp is a little bit purple and I just stamped that off on not my scrap paper. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, and then let's have a look at the outline, how the outline looks in the Blackberry Bliss. Actually, my black my Blackberry Bliss needs re-inking, I think. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so what if we had that? Okay, let's do one up here. What if we had the Blackberry Bliss as the, do it up a bit higher, as the outline? Oh, my, my ink pad really does need re-inking. It's very dry. Yep, okay. And then... Now I've got two pink stamps, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. They're coming nice and clean. See how the, the um, now that I've used that deep color, the photopolymer has gone a little bit pinky. So, but when I'm cleaning that and stamping it off onto scrap paper, it is coming clean. Okay. It's just that the polymer holds those deep pigments. So don't be worried about that. It still stamps fine. And then if we use, I wonder what a bit of petal pink would look like in, in the inside on the solid, with the solid shape. Let's have a look at that, how that would look. Let's check that on. Oh, that's just recently been re-inked, so that's very inky. Not sure how this will look. I'll just try it on this one that I botched up. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. That looks quite good. It's quite dark at the moment, my petal pink. It's more orangey than anything because um, I just re-inked it and I possibly over-inked it. But that looks quite nice. Look at that. That looks like my butterfly that I'm wearing today, except my butterfly's got a black outline, not, um, not a deep purple outline. So we can do that. Um, we can do the outline. So let's do the outline of the label. We'll do that in the Blackberry Bliss. Ah, now interesting. Okay, so that doesn't fit around. Interesting, does it go that way? Oh, it fits that way. Okay, so with the butterfly, it actually fits that way. Now I've done it a bit too close to the edge. Okay, so... Um, let's go, let's do one up here. We'll do that again. Oh, didn't get that quite clean. I'll use the, I always like to clean, keep one side of my chamois a bit cleaner and leave one side stained just so that I can then um, give it a second clean on the clean side and I can see if all of that ink's coming out of it or not. Okay, that's better now. All right, so let's do another butterfly up here. But for this label, the butterfly needs to go this way. Can it go at a slight angle? Yes, we can put it at a slight angle. In fact, if you put it at a slight angle, then if you don't get it quite straight, if you're trying to get it straight, it looks like you meant it which I did mean to do that crook at that time. I meant to do it at a bit of an angle. There we go. Okay. Now 
and let's do the solid shape again now as I said you might like to color these with your um, coloring tools rather than doing the two-step stamping but two-step stamping is so much quicker and easier so if you're in a hurry or um, you just want to do a, a different technique then you can do it this way Just got my scrap paper off to the side there. All right, now this time I'm going to take my punch this way up from the end and we'll punch that out. There we go. And there is our little butterfly. So you can see that some of the shapes are going to work um, landscape and some of them are going to work portrait. So I want to do... Um, I want to have my labels going portrait today so I think I'm going to use the flowers now if you wanted to use the butterflies to go um, this way what you can do um, portrait sorry <laughs> what you can do is that you can actually fussy cut your butterflies I know some of you don't like fussy cutting but I'm just going to show you this isn't a really difficult shape to fussy cut but I'm going to show you how you can still use it with a label going the opposite direction. So if I if I um, stamp a label, I'll just stamp one first and punch that out. Just do one up here. Clean that. that label now I just realized I was going to use very vanilla today and I've just done all of this on white but that's okay we can change our minds can't we <laughs> or or lose track of our um, an original idea <laughs> okay so then we can let me grab my glasses here we can just very easily fussy cut this little butterfly and I'll do this quite quickly. So I won't, it won't be the most perfect fussy cutting probably because I'm going to try and do it a little bit quickly. Just to show you that it's not a difficult shape to fussy cut. And if you took more time than what I'm taking, um, you'd be able to do it really nicely. I'm not doing too bad a job. I've got it a little bit. I've got my little halo around my butterfly a little bit wider in um, some parts. But we can always go back and fix that up. It's just a little bit wider here. We'll just trim that down a bit. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, so then what we can do is now we've got our butterfly cut out, we can shape the little wings and we can attach our butterfly to our label that way okay so you can still use it in a um, portrait orientation by adding your butterfly to that now you might want to pop that up on stamp and dimensionals to give it a little bit of dimension or you might want to put it flat you might want to put it at the top or at the bottom just depending on your project so um, there's a couple of different ways of using it but we might go with the flowers today because we're going to be using some um, florally sort of paper and just having a look to see how that's going to yeah we might I might go with the white actually because we've got white base so there's a couple of different ways so stamping straight onto the label in a um, landscape orientation or fussy cutting for a portrait orientation so I might use that one for another card I might use both of those for another card okay so we might make some more of these ones and I think I'm going to do some lighter color flowers as well so I might do another darker one and then I might do um, what color did I use did I use peach pie or can't even remember which color I use now I think I use the peach pie 
So we might use, we might do another one in peach pie and then we'll do one in petal pink as well. Okay, turn my cardstock up this way and we'll do the same. This time I'm going to do the outline in pumpkin pie and I'm going to do that first so I can line everything up on the inside of that to make that, I'll see if that's easier doing it that way. There we go. Now I won't fit another one there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut away a bit of this cardstock here. Oops. So that I can get my punch in up here and we can do another one going that way. There you go. So always know which way your punch is going to punch out from the edge of your cardstock. That's important. And we need that green. Oh, and we needed the peach pie as well. Okay. So another thing you can do too is you can use a blending brush and you can add a little bit of colour to the background. So you might want to add a soft, um, depending on what colour you're using. So say if we're going to, um, say if we're going to stamp in the peach pie, peach pie, then you or vice versa, it doesn't really matter, um, you might want to add a little bit of colour to the background first. So you can um, load up your brush with your ink and then bring in your scrap paper. Let's move across this way a little bit. Oh, we'll get rid of that, that scrap there. I feel like I'm working a lot off to the, uh, to the right side today. Um, load up your brush with your ink. Tap it off onto some scrap paper first, just to remove any of the heavy excess ink there. And then take that to your piece and you might like to add a little bit of color in the background and just soften that a little bit, okay? Now I've got this one here that I've already stamped. If I want to add color to that, I can go over the top of that. I would probably normally um, add it first, but you can go over the top and just soften that down a little bit and just add a little bit of a peachy colored background to that, which I think that makes that look really pretty. So why don't we do that on all of these labels? And I'm just adding very little pressure to just give a little bit more color. And then that's just incorporating an extra technique. So you can leave that, that part out if you don't want to do that. Or if you want to step it up and add a little bit of technique, you can do something like that as well. Now, it's also another great way of colouring in your butterfly. So if you're going to be fussy cutting your butterfly anyway, take your, um, take your blending brush or you can use a sponge dauber. And I do have my sponge daubers here ready as well, which I thought I would pull out if um, we got to that. But showing lots of different techniques today. So let's see, we've got peach pie. Petal pink, pumpkin pie. So you could you could do that on your butterfly as well, or it's turned up the right way. Let's use this time our um, sponge dauber, and I'll show you a different. So this is peach pie, peach pie. Just making sure I've got the right color. I label all of my sponge daubers with the individual color, um, so that I don't mix them up and and um, muddy up my colors. And then you can take your um, sponge dauber and you can color your butterfly. Now, I'm not worried about going out of the lines at the moment because I would probably fussy cut that. Now, if you are worried about going out of the lines, um, you can take a bit more of a gentler approach. You can do a bit of dabbing on there. Um, and then once you fussy cut that around, it wouldn't even matter that you went out of the lines. Um, Leslie says, watching you demonstrate this bundle, the punch would be that little easier rather than the die. Very true, Leslie. Yeah, very true. Um, it would it would be easier um, probably. It just depends. Like some people prefer dies, some people prefer punches. Um, it's whatever whatever you prefer. If you are using the coordinating dies rather than um, the stamp. Um, just make sure that you use some washi tape or, or a post-it label to adhere uh, to um, 
position your die and hold it in place as you're going through to die cut. But yeah, I know what you mean, Leslie, because the dies um, are cutting three at a time, whereas the punch is just a single, um, punching a single shape at a time. So yeah, I'll be interested to see how it would work with, um, with the dies. All right, so let's make a couple more of these. This one I'm going to go with... Um, Where's our paper here? I'm going to try this time. I want to stamp off my greenery first, my leaves. So let's bring in the leaves. I might just do it. I won't do is I'm going to just stamp it off quickly onto scrap paper first and then stamp it onto my project and see how you get a nice light color. So it's still in the same tone, but it's a lighter color. So I'm just going to um, do that here. So I'll do it on the tag this time. So quickly tap it off onto your um, scrap paper and then straight onto your piece that you want to stamp it onto. Okay. And then we're going to take the petal pink this time. We're doing this one in the other color, color way. Um, where's our flowers? There we go. And you can do the same with this, actually. Let's have a look. So if we stamp off and then stamp. Okay, that'll be way too light. So we'll do it full strength. And we'll line those up in the little, in the little spaces amongst the leaves there. And as I said, it might take you a couple of goes to get that exactly right but I think it's fairly forgiving this stamp there we go that's much better than the one before so I had that sort of angled I was looking to see where the hole was here for this one and this little one here and then lining this one up above that stem there okay so if that helps so see how that's a little bit softer I actually like that one better it's quite a bit softer so I might just have that as a single one and then I might do another one in that colorway because I like that colorway better or that color combination I should say some people say colorway some people say color combination depends on how you want to say it all right let's do that again so we're going to stamp off our greenery and then we're going to stamp into our label there we go okay then we're going to take our petal pink line up our oh that's a bit blobby because my ink pad is very juicy line these flowers up again and beautiful lovely very good okay Now, let's get um, some cleaning happening here. There we go. Okay, they're all clean. And now we'll punch these out. Now, you could do three exactly the same if you wanted to. You could do... Um, all different or you can um yeah maybe do them in different colors just depends you could leave them without the coloring in the background but this is kind of what i was thinking of was having two lighter ones on the outside edges and then the darker one in the middle what do you think or we could have a sentiment in the middle we could do that all right, which sentiments do we like? So the happy birthday will have to go um, landscape. So probably won't use a happy birthday, but enjoy today or you are loved. You are loved. Let's use that one. I like that. You are loved. Okay, just use one of these blocks. Use one of these blocks. 
and we'll stamp the you are loved so maybe if we have maybe if we have the you are loved in the middle instead of that dark colored one and we have those two on the sides or you could have those two together and then the sentiment depending on which way you want to do it okay i've been doing lots of techniques showing and lots of product sharing today i feel like i need to be a little bit quicker all right so i'm going to have to get my punch in there somewhere so i'm going to chop out a little bit of this cardstock I'll go around that butterfly because I might save that butterfly for another project because that one's quite nice. Save that with the other butterflies. Maybe I can use them together. All right, so this one is going to go in here. So let's use the same color border. We'll use the pumpkin pie. Oh, you know what? We could use... Yeah, let's use a pumpkin pie border and we'll, we might stamp the sentiment in garden green. Or we could do the reverse. I think I'll keep them all the same, all the borders the same, all the little the little um, frames the same. Where'd my frame stamp go? There it is. Okay. So we'll stamp that over here. Give that a clean. Stamp it off, dry it off, and then do you reckon we should stamp the uh, sentiment in green or should we stamp it in one of the lighter colour oranges? Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Oh. That one needs another clean. I can tell when I ink that up, I could see that the stamp was repelling the ink. So I mustn't have cleaned that one well the first time. So we'll just give it another clean. I'll try that again. That's better. That's better. It's not repelling the ink as much now. There we go. You reckon green, Brenton? Yeah. Good call. I like that. Nice. Okay. Yeah, keeping with the same color, um, the same colors, hey? All right. Now, we should really wait for that ink to dry before um, you go in with your punch so that you don't smudge it. And also, if you're die cutting, make sure that that ink dries before you... Um, yeah, try to do anything with it. Now, I didn't put the colour on over that one, so just make sure that that ink is dry before we go over the top of that. Um, Leslie said, I'm a dye person, but I think with this bundle I would go with the punch. Yeah, well, there you go. Yep, well, it's good to try something different too, isn't it? All right, so let's add a little bit of colour to this one. Uh, which colour did we add? <laughs> Who remembers? Was it peach pie or was it petal pink? What colour did we add over the top? I think it was the peach pie, wasn't it? I better test it on the scrap paper first. I think it was a peach pie. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely peach pie. Okay, good. <laughs> I was just like, um, I better make sure I use the right colour here. Otherwise, that would look a bit strange. Oop. Okay, probably could have let that green ink dry a little bit more. I feel like I've smudged it just slightly. Probably won't come up on camera, but... Um, no, that's okay. That's all good. Oh, I think it was actually the orange down here that I smudged. The, um, yeah, but that's okay because it's orange into orange. It's a bit of a, an ombre effect. There we go. All right. Okay, now. For our card base, I've got a little bit of um, pumpkin pie. Well, I've cut this... 
A4 cardstock sheet in half already. And now we're going to, so I've cut it in half, um, yeah, cut it in half that way. Now we're going to turn it on the long side to score it in half. And we'll score it in half that way. There we go. Take our bone folder. Okay. Now, for our layers... So these are going to go across our card. For our layers, we've got this paper, which is very pretty, and then I thought I'd break it up with this paper. So I think I'll do a simple layer of this. Uh, in fact, we might go, we might go all the way across there, or will we do a border? Um, hmm. Edge to edge or border? Do you reckon? With a top and bottom border. We could do a top and bottom border. I was going to do the strips across. I need to make sure that these are going to fit. And I need to do a, a layer of that as well. We might go. Um, oh, I know. I know, I know. I just got an idea. If we do that on that for a little bit of a contrasting colour and have that go all the way across. So we've got an extra layer there and we can take that all the way across then. Well, we could leave a little border too. Oh, we might leave a little border. We might leave a little border. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, um, we're gonna go down here a bit. I'm just gonna make sure I leave, a, leave enough room for these layers okay so I might cut it at so I'm winging the sizes here I kind of had something in mind um, but I hadn't worked out the measurements just yet hang on a sec I've got to find my ruler now where's that ruler gone um, my ruler's not in here where's my ruler gone on a sec i'll have to get one of these other rulers okay so we're going to leave a little so normally what's our two millimeter border is normally 13.85 across okay so 13.85 i might go this way actually that'll save card stop so 13.85 across and then i want to leave a bit more of a border top and bottom with this one So let's see. I will take a centimetre off the top and the bottom. Okay. So that is 10.5. 10.5. We want to take a centimetre top and bottom. So let's go 8.5. I hope this is right. I will put all these measurements on my blog for you. Um, so don't take me at um don't take my measurements necessarily now because they might not be right <laughs> um 14.45 we want to go across here all right let's see if that's if that's the size i wanted it yes there we go so we've got a little bit of space either side a little bit of a border there and then we've got a wider border top and bottom so we've got a one centimeter border top and bottom and then just two millimeters each side that's what i wanted okay beautiful all right just make sure these have got plenty of room to still fit yep then with this piece we're going to do a full border with two millimeters around so i need to write this down actually so what did I just do? I did um, 8.5 by 14.45. And now I want to do a two millimeter border all the way around. So that means it needs to be 8.1 times 14.05. Okay. So 
we'll go this way first, 8.1. Such pretty paper, isn't it? Whoops, that slipped. I saw that slip then. 8.1. Okay. By 14.05. 14.05. We've got keep these little pieces because you can use them to decorate the inside of your card or you can use them to embellish other projects all right looking at the time i'm trying to be quick and finish this off okay beautiful so we've got that layer that layer that layer awesome so pretty and then we just need to break it up with this piece here so I'm thinking with this piece here, maybe I might take that all the way to the edges. I need to make sure that's going to fit around. So let's measure how tall these are actually. How tall are these? These are six centimeters. So if I measure that at seven centimeters, how much? Oh yeah, let's measure that at seven centimeters. Cut that at seven. Working out these measurements as we go. Semi on the fly today. And then hang on a minute, just tidying up as I go. <laughs> um all right, then 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 that one. I reckon we take all the way across, edge to edge. Yep. So what was the width of that one, did I say? 14.05. 14.05. Now, the 0.5s are a little bit tricky sometimes. It's halfway between the lines, um, but it's more of an accurate measurement, so it does work out quite well. Beautiful. That's what we want. Okay, good. All right, so as you can see, these layers are really simple. It's just a matter of figuring out how you want it to look. And you can work the measurements out as you go. You can cut them by eye if you want to. That's what I used to do. Or use a pencil and ruler to mark your cardstock as you go. Okay, so it's going to go like that. These are going to go here like that. We're going to pop them up on dimensionals. There we go. Now I do want to add a bit of ribbon. I'll, I'll put some dimensionals behind those first, actually. Um, if you didn't want to, in fact, I'm wasting a lot of cardstock here in the middle. If you didn't want to waste, but I'm in a hurry, so I'm not going to change it at the moment. But if you didn't want to waste all of that cardstock in the middle, you could just cut, say, one centimeter strips and stick them to the top of this piece here. Or you probably want one and a half centimetres because we've got, um, well, actually, let's see. We've got, it's actually only about half a centimetre that you're seeing either side. So if you measured it at one and a half, a one centimetre, you'd have still a half centimetre overlap that you could put adhesive behind. Do you know what I mean? So you've just got a strip of DSP there. So you're not wasting all of that that's behind this piece. Um, but I haven't got time to do that now because it's getting late. So I'm just going to do it um, like that. Um, then we're going to add some dimensionals. I'm just going to do three on each piece again because I'm in a hurry. And I opened up a new packet of dimensionals today. It's always exciting. Haven't drawn my lines on the backs of these ones yet with my Sharpie, but I will get to that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so they're going to go like that, like that. Grab some ribbon and bling. It's going to be a very simple little card, but it'll be really pretty. Now, with the ribbon, I'm thinking of some white ribbon. I do have the petal pink and white ribbon. I've got all of my ribbon. I got some more ribbons the other day, so I've got all of my ribbons here in the box. Um, all organized. We do have some of the um, other orange ribbons, but I think that one was the is that, um, 
pecan, uh, sorry, peach pie. Um, but I think we've already got enough orange. I think we need to break it up with the white. Then we've got, we've got lots of, we've got a few whites actually. So these were probably, I want a solid white. This one I think will be too sheer. So I think we need a more solid white. Or you could use, you could use some um, twine as well if you wanted to. But I think I'm going to use white. It's just whether I use this one with the frayed edge or I use a diagonal trim which comes in a combo pack and I use that one that's the one that's the one I want okay so I'm going to adhere these layers together first I'll grab my glue my green glue I'm not going to adhere them to the card yet we're just going to do layer upon layer. So I know this video has been really long, but I hope that you have gained some um, tips and tricks along the way, which I love to help you with ideas. Okay, so we've got our little two millimeter border around this floral piece of DSP. And then this one is going to be edge to edge on the short sides with a border top and bottom. Uh-oh, I think I just used up the last of my glue. Yep, I need to get another glue out. All right, so we've just got a little half centimetre border top and bottom with that pretty, pretty paper. Then I'm going to wrap this ribbon around this layer and I'm going to tie a bow over on this side here. Oh, in fact, I should have taken that. Sorry, should have taken my ribbon the other way. I like to tie my ribbon straight from my spool so that um, I'm not wasting as much. In fact, this ribbon actually has a right side and a wrong side. I just realized so make sure that you've got the right side of your ribbon we're going to see if we can tie a little bit of a bow now if you don't get the bow exactly hang on more fingers and thumbs because I'm trying to rush if you don't get the bow exactly where you want it first go you can um, shimmy it across so I'm just going to try and get this bow done and then I will move it now with this because I'm putting the bow at the side it doesn't kind of matter if it's not exactly straight and in fact if it was a bit of an angled bow it's probably going to fit better all right so we'll do that we'll snip off the end oh we want to go that way that way in fact I'll just cut that a little bit shorter cute there we go and I want to shimmy that over to the edge once I get it in place I'm, I'm going to put a glue dot underneath it so that it won't move that's going to go down there and then we've got our little pieces not that one this one okay so we've got our sentiment we've got our so you can put these as close or as far apart as you want and in fact you know what I'm going to put them over a little bit too the side so that we can fit our bow. Let's shimmy our bow over just a little bit more to the edge, closer to that edge there. And then put these here like that. Yes, that will be great. All right, so I'm gonna put um, a glue dot under that bow now so that that stays put and doesn't move anywhere. Oops, sorry about that. Change the mode on my light then by accident. Okay, we are nearly there. Thank you for bearing with me, everybody. Oops, come on, glue dot. It's not wanting to work with me today. Wait on that, just rolled up. It's because I'm trying to rush. And whenever you try to rush, things just don't work, do they? 
All right, sneak that in there underneath that bow to hold that in place. Oh, I just might shimmy that up a little bit, just a tad. I feel like that slipped a little bit. Is that in the middle? Sort of in the middle. I think that'll be okay. I might put another one at the back here on this side just to hold that in place too so that that doesn't slide around. And pop that under there. There we go. That should hold that goodly in place. All right. And now, so that's the ribbon. Um, and now we're going to attach this onto this layer and I'm just going to stick that down flat. Um, I'm going to use some tear and tape because I've used ribbon and I'm going to take the tear and tape over the top of the ribbon to, um, oh, I always do that. That's why I cut my tape. I just accidentally ripped the back of my cardstock a little bit then when I did that. Let me grab my tape scissors. And I'll just cut that and that. There we go. All right, I'll take that. Actually, I might just take the top part off. Oh no, I'll have to take all of it because it's cardstock and it's only a small piece. Sometimes I just take the um, one edge off first before adhering all of it. But because I've got a smaller piece this time, it won't be sort of as um, flexible to me to for me to do it the normal way I do it. But anyway, sorry, I'm probably rambling. I know what I mean. <laughs> you probably don't know what I mean. All right, so we're going to line that up. Oh, no, that's right, not edge to edge. We have a little two millimetre border, don't we? That's right. Lucky I checked. So we'll add that there. So we've got that little border. Okay, great. We'll line these up on here again before we adhere them, just to make sure we've got them lined up where we want them. So they're like that. Yep, I'm going to stick the middle one first. In fact, it probably was a good idea to stick the end one first because it's got a fit on the end, hasn't it? Uh, okay, so make sure we center that top and bottom and try to get them as straight as possible. I won't push that one on too hard yet, just in case. Pop this little one here. And line this one up with the edge and then we can shimmy this one if we need to oh it's actually not too bad and then lastly we'll put this one try and leave even space between them line them up there like that there we go and now all we need to do is add some bling so I've got all of my bling here. I think this is my white, oh, you know what? Some white pearls might look nice on there. We also have some little butterflies. I might lose the butterflies on there, actually. They're a little bit, um, might lose them. There's a lot going on there. So let's just see, oh, juicy gems. They are nice and sparkly, so that's another option. Of course, we've always got our um, rhinestones, dragonflies. Dragonflies would look nice there, but I think we might lose them with all that pattern. And it's they're kind of a similar color because they're gold. They're similar to the um, sort of the orangey tones. So I think something silver or a color would go better. Let me throw too much pink. So many different embellishments. Don't you just love that we have all of these choices of embellishments with Stampin' Up! products? Yeah, I'm tending towards the silvers, I'm thinking. Let's see now. Oh, they're in the right colour tone. These ones. 
that's the petal pink and pretty peacock foil gems that's why because they are petal pink in fact maybe we should be using green not the, not the pretty peacock though yeah i think we'll lose those oh there's some green ones let's see what they look like either the green i think or the silver then we've got the silver in these ones too the faceted gem trio We've got those ones. Oh, what what colour green is these? Tinsel Gem 4 pack. Not sure what colour green that is. It doesn't look quite the right green. So many to choose from. They're a bit too light. So many, so many. All right, let's see. We've got these ones. I want to see what the green ones would look like, actually. our rhinestones i love these new juicy gems because they are so super sparkly like if you look at them in i know they're in the packet but in comparison to the faceted gems which i always thought the faceted gems were beautiful but the juicy are so much more sparkly and then we've got the iridescent pearls which we could use as well which is a softer embellishment but let's try the green I'm not sure what color green this is supposed to be because it's not on the packet and I would have to look it up in the online store. And I don't have time to do that right now because we're trying to rush to get it ready. Oh, you know what? I think the green might actually go. Oh, the Drusy are your favorites too, Brenton. Yeah, I love them. They're so beautiful, aren't they? So what if we do this? What do you reckon about the green ones? Bringing in a bit more of that green. That works, actually. Look at that. That works. Let's do that. Let's do that. Where will we put this one? I'll put that one down there somewhere. There we go. Yeah, that works with the green. That ties in that green a little bit more, brings that in, because we've got a lot of um, oranges going on there. So there you go. So that is the transparent adhesive backed dots. So they're the ones that we are using today. Let me just turn that off. Um, the Drusies would definitely look beautiful in the, um, I think the silvers definitely would go better on there rather than, oh, you know what? The golds might go on there nicely too because they are very, very sparkly. I think you could use either. Well, there you go. All right. So what do you think? So I've made a lovely big mess here. <laughs> So there you go. So that is the Labelled with Love bundle with the stamps and the punch. That's the stamp and the punch bundle. And there's our beautiful little card that we made today. So there's another little idea. There's some great, um, oh, thank you, Rose. There's some great um, projects in the um, catalogue as well using this bundle. Um, so there's some more great ideas in there as well. So be sure to check that out. So there we go. All right, I'm going to tip the camera up very quickly to say goodbye to you face to face. So bear with me one moment. And here we go. Okay. I'll just transition the camera. So bear with me two secs. So there we go. So a long one today, but um, very simple project. It's just that we were talking about the different products, some different ideas, um, looking at some of those products that are going to be on special. And I've dumped everything on top of my flyer. So remember that we've got the seasonal sale from the 13th to the 15th of um November. We are in November, yes, 2024. Um, and here is the card that I used, actually using the bundle that is shown on the flyer. So there you go. So that is the Labelled with Love bundle. So there's the card up nice and close. So we've got a bit of dimension on there, which you can kind of see there. A little bit of technique using the blending brushes, some two-step stamping, 
um, some punching and some beautiful designer series paper. So this designer series paper is going to be on special for 20% off and the bundle is going to be 20% off as well. There's going to be lots and lots of other beautiful products from the annual catalogue that are going to be on special. So be sure that you definitely check that out. Now also too, it's also a great time to um, grab the starter kit as well because all of those products that are discounted, you can put into the starter kit so you can maximize your value and get even more. So you get to choose $235 worth of product, including those things that are already discounted at the discounted price, and you're only gonna pay $169. And then you're gonna have an ongoing 20% discount to spend on your um, Stampin' Up! products. So if you would like more information about that and you'd like to come and join our beautiful crafting community um, and my beautiful, beautiful, amazing team, then please feel free to get in contact with me if you're here in Australia and you don't already have a demonstrator that you're working with. Um, if you'd like catalogs as well, let me know. I'd love to get them out to you. And if there's anything else that I can help you with or if you have any questions, please feel free to get in contact with me um, and I'll be happy to help you. All right. Oh, thank you so much, Brenton. Thanks, Rose. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you for all of our replay warriors as well. I hope you learned something today and you had fun. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Have a great week, everyone. And as I always say, happy crafting. Bye.